In the previous movie, I showed using the Happy Nerding 3x VCA as a voltage-controlled mixer or as a standard voltage-controlled amplifier. In this movie, I'm going to focus on using it to control modulation paths running around my system. For example, what if I want to use the mod wheel to control an LFO's depth going to something like the filter? That's a very common trick with synthesizers, but it requires a VCA in the middle to adjust how strong the LFO is going to be in the middle. Right now, I went back to my standard patch of two oscillators, through a filter, through the happy nerding as a VCA. If I were to patch my LFO, I'm going to take one from the Roland 540 in this case, into a control voltage input on my filter, I immediately have a very strong LFO. I could cut it back by reducing the CV1 amount. But it'd be even more fun if that was under some form of performance control, like my mod wheel. So I'm going to take my LFO out and treat that as the signal going through one of these VCAs. Plug it into the input jack, take the output from that, run that into the CV1 input. And with no control voltage coming in, now I have the center bias voltage knob to decide how strong that LFO is. <laughs> back down to zero for now. And instead, I'm going to route a control voltage from my mod wheels control voltage out on the FH1 into the CV input on one of my VCAs. Make sure that I've turned up my CV inverting attenuator so it's not at 12 o'clock. And now my mod wheel controls that depth. Let's go ahead and increase the speed, increase the depth here. For me, it's a lot more fun to be able to perform that from my keyboard than to rely on me reaching over and having to grab a knob or to leave it at one setting all the time. I'm doing that with an LFO. Of course, I could even do that with frequency modulation. I'll borrow another output from one of my oscillators, the disting in this case. And there I've got mod wheel control over FMing the filter, which is even more fun than a simple automated wah-wah. Another common thing to do with VCAs is a tremolo effect, where you affect the volume up and down. However, this is not as straightforward as you might expect. This is where the offset or bias knob on the Happy Nerding VCAs come in really handy. I'm going to pull my FM to the filter for now. Remove that. I'm going to keep my LFO. And in this case, I want the control voltage for the VCA, the voltage that opens and closes it, to be my LFO. The LFO is not my signal that I'm trying to modify the strength of, it's now my controller. I'm going to pull out my mod wheel, move it over to the sine wave again here, take the output of my final VCA here, run it to the input on the top VCA. By the way, that LED again indicates the control voltage coming from the LFO, and changes colors depending on the polarity, very cool. And then I'm going to initially just take the output of that VCA and route it through data so you can see what's happening with waveform, into my output module. Now when I play a note, the sound cuts out for half that LFO. But with a tremolo, I want it to be always on. I don't want it cutting out for half of the sound. So to do that, I'm going to increase the bias to say even at the most negative excursion of my LFO, add enough voltage back in to keep it so that some sound is always passing through that LFO. I can reduce my depth either by using the inverting attenuator here on the VCA or I could use another VCA again to go ahead and say use the mod wheel to control the tremolo depth going to that VCA. Instead of that I'm going to do one more trick. Let's say we want to do stereo tremolo where the sound moves back and forth left and right. To do stereo tremolo while one of the amplifiers opens to make the sound louder in one channel, a different amplifier needs to go quieter to lower the volume in the other channel. Well, fortunately, the Happy Nerding VCA has inverting attenuators on the control voltage input, so this is going to be easy. I'm going to take the control voltage from my LFO and split it. 
So I can use an old earthen var IV cable for splitting one signal into two. Take one, route it into the CV of my additional VCA down here, and plug in the original modulation back to the top VCA. If I turn number two's inverting attenuator down to zero, you'll see no signal coming in right now. Then I'm gonna take my audio signal and also split it. I'm gonna take a stackable cable in this case, pull the input coming from my VCA into one channel of my tremolo. And instead, use the stackable cable to plug into both of those VCA inputs and finally take what was just my left channel coming out of the top VCA and add to it by grabbing the right channel from the second VCA in the stack. So now I have the bottom VCA being split going to the top two VCAs, going to left and right outputs. I have my LFO being split going to the control voltage, the top two VCAs. There we have some cool tremolo already happening. If I go ahead and offset the inverting attenuator for the second VCA to say when this LFO goes positive, the voltage to the second one should go negative. And again, use these offsets to make sure the VCAs are always open so we don't go to silence and start playing around with width by increasing these attenuators. Now you see as my single LFO puts out a signal, one side goes positive while the other side goes negative, changing the volumes between the left and right sides. These LEDs again on the right side are the strength of the audio coming out. You don't often see an inverting attenuator for the control voltage input of a VCA. That's because many people think of VCAs just as enveloping the amplitude of sound. If you think of a VCA as a way to control levels and modulations going around inside your synthesizer, you can see why it makes so much sense to have this bias voltage and an inverting attenuator for the control voltage to give you that much more control over levels passing around inside your system. So obviously, this is a very handy utility module to have.